Let's investigate the best places to visit in Afghanistan. The loved home of the Mosque of the Sacred Cloak and a city saturated with history, Kandahar sits at the intersection where southern Afghanistan meets the mountains of the nation's heartland. The customary seat of Pashtun power, it was the capital of the last Afghan domain during the long stretches of Ahmad Shah Durrani. Today, the spot is loaded up with mosques, hallowed places, and sepulchres to illuminating presences from the public past, and people come to see the inquisitive engravings of the incomparable Mughal trespasser Baba on the Chilzina view, found simply on the edges of the city. He cobalt arches of the incomparable Blue Mosque shoulder their direction over the horizon of Mazar-e-Sharif, sparkling white sweltering under the searing bulk sun. Celebrated as the internment site of Ali Kanister Talib, the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad himself, it's a perfect cluster of arabesque and South Asian engineering, complete with turquoise blue arches and gold-peppered minarets. In any case, the Muslim history is only one part of Mazar-e-Sharif, on the grounds that this city is additionally home to endless Greek relics, ones that track down their direction here with the approaching of Alexander's militaries in the 3rd century BC. Established, like such countless different urban communities in these parts, by the ruler Akbar, Jalalabad is where the section of antiquated time is essentially tangible. You can regularly pretty much make out the cold pinnacles of the Safed mountain range not too far off, and envision how the Mughal armed forces would have felt as they considered them way, thinking back to the 1500s. Nearer to the city and the environment takes into account citrus plantations and green parks, something Jalalabad is known for. You can likewise see the catacomb of King Aminullah Khan, join local people for fervently challenged cricket match-up, or simply partake in the manicured stops and gardens. Hailed as the focal point of the Bactrian Empire of old, the matured town of Balkh has a set of experiences returning just about 4,000 years. Indeed, it had arrived, high up in the holes of the northern edges of the Hindu Kush, that Zoroastrianism and Buddhism first prospered in quite a while. When the Venetian traveler Marco Polo showed up during the 1300s, the town would have been annihilated, even by Genghis Khan himself, and remade commonly, however recollections of its extraordinary fortress dividers and learning organizations would in any case have been ready. Today, the town is not really the respectable capital it used to be, however there is a sure unmistakable history to be found in the midst of the humming markets and emerald-toned green mosque. It's not difficult to see the reason why Herat, the third biggest city in Afghanistan, has such a Persian flavor to it, the town sits only a short distance from the Iranian boundary, and it was once the home of the Timurid line, a heredity that intertwined components of Turkic, Persian and Mongol culture in their time. The extraordinary masterpiece of the city is the Friday Mosque. This rich construction of turquoise-tipped minarets and gleaming tiles makes certain to wow the faculties, it's believed to be over eight centuries old. There's likewise the Herat Citadel to see, and the burial chambers of venerated Sufi writers. While the town of Somongon is an antiquated troop stop on the outskirts courses of the old Silk Road, the distinguishing strength isn't really its significant draw. That honor goes to the secretive cavern buildings of Takht i Rostam that cut their direction through the dusty edges of the mountains close by. These are remembered to have been implicit the fourth and fifth hundreds of years AD, and are decorated with ravishing Buddhist trims of lotus leaves, all zeroing in on an inward mud block stupa. They offer a vivid look into a nearly neglected, pre-Muslim past. For admirers of culture and strict history, the Bamiyan story is an exceptionally pitiful one. In antiquated times, the spot was known as a center point for Hindu-Buddhist love, and it flourished with craftsmen's, cloisters and, particularly, stone carvers in the ages before the Muslim intrusion. Indeed, the two Goliath sculptures of the Buddha that remained here were viewed as the absolute most exquisite 4th and 5th century carvings in all of Asia. In March 2001, be that as it may, 
these incredible representations were obliterated by the Taliban, causing global shock, and in any event, provoking UNESCO to label their remaining parts to forestall further annihilation. Supported by the broken etched passes of the strong Hindu Kush, Faisabad Sith stowed away its own special distant territory of the northern Afghan mountains. The area characterizes the town, giving it that natural, backwater feel. You'll see galumphing jackasses swaggering the roads and beady looked at, hairy sheep ranchers meandering the marketplaces. You'll meet nearby highlanders with feet worn by the paths of the incomparable Waikan Corridor. You'll observe flavor-scented stew houses and have the option to investigate the dazzling elevated valleys of the Kokja River. The amazing scopes of the band E. Amir became home to the very first public park in Afghanistan back in 2009. It's not difficult to see the reason why as well. Sprinkled by no less than six individual mountain lakes, roosted in excess of 3,000 meters up in the rough pinnacles of the Hindu Kush, and manufactured by centuries of interesting geographical developments, the entire region is a wondrous spot to see. Explorers come in the spring and summer, when the temperatures are not an insufferable 20 Celsius beneath, to stand amazed at the cobalt blue waters of Band E. Ponir and the Band E. Goleman. Kabul has been plunged in disarray since the takeover of the Mujahideen and Al-Qaeda, the Taliban agitators and different groups after the beginning of the country's cutting-edge wars. Notwithstanding the presence of peacekeeping powers, agitators sneak in the shadows of the city, hitting with bombs and assaults occasionally. It's a dismal situation for a capital with such a huge amount to offer. Kabul was once a social hotpot of Zoroastrianism and Buddhism. Later there were Hindus here and even Alexander the Great. Today, this rich past can be investigated at the Kabul Museum, that is, assuming you consider it protected to enter. Kunduz is really minimal in excess of a transportation center point for voyagers anxious to cross the tri-state line in the north, where Tajikistan meets Uzbekistan meets Afghanistan. In any case, it comes included in incredible wraps of verdant farmlands, and has a rational, provincial climate that is lost on the bigger urban areas on this rundown. Sadly, Later times have seen the tumult of the Afghan conflict pizzazz up again close to Kunduz, and there have been pitched fights between the Taliban, the military, and different guerrilla gatherings. All in all, come here hoping to enter a disaster area. The Khyber Pass absolutely falls into that wide classification of puts not at present on the menu for the voyager in Afghanistan, since something like 2007, the entire area here has been overwhelmed by Taliban guerrillas, with Western guide and military escorts designated explicitly. In any case, when the strains lift and the conflict dies down, this high-roosted stretch of land in the statues of the Spin Gar will unquestionably merit the visit. Eh? Indeed, in light of the fact that for a really long time it's facilitated militaries and merchants. They came on the Silk Road from China and the East, or they came as magnificent military pioneers like Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan. Cutting its direction into the lower regions of the Hindu Kush from the eastern regions of Afghanistan, the Pangshir Valley is tipped to become one of the recently discovered modern forces to be reckoned with of the country. With American speculation starting to lead the pack, discuss everything from emerald mining to hydroelectric age is being drifted for these parts. Notwithstanding, until further notice, Pangshir stays the great variety of snow-beat mountains and winding waterways, verdant fields and provincial villages it's forever been, with the exception of, or at least, when the Soviets moved this way during their intrusion during the 1980s. Albeit the little eastern city of Bagram, found simply a short distance from both Kabul, the capital, and the ascents of the Hindu Kush, is maybe most popular to present day spectators as seeing the biggest united army installation in the country, this one story really goes significantly more profound than that. First off, the town was vanquished during the 300s BC by, in all honesty, Alexander the Great, 
who consequently made changes to its format in the Grecian way. What's more later, the spot passed to the Mauryan Empire, who offered their Indian creative customs as a powerful influence for the district. Talokon sits in the shadow of the giant Hindu Kush, directly over the mountains from the Poshtun locales of southern Afghanistan. Its idea that the encompassing valleys have been involved for over a thousand years, a reality uncovered by the portrayals of one Marco Polo, who passed this way in 1275. Notwithstanding, the Talokon of today is a more present-day place, with business sectors clamoring with customers and donkeys meeting murmuring tuk-tuks in the roads. The memory and severe truth of the 2001 conflict stays crude here, so it's a subject surely best kept away from. Thanks for watching.